Today we're talking to St Albans City Manager Ian Allenson at Clarence Park after the Saints have progressed through to the final qualifying round of the FA Cup with a 2-1 win over Wessex League side Bridport. People would have expected City to win comfortably, Ian, and for an hour, well, under an hour, I should say, it looked that way. We were in control, they had a few chances, but uh, generally it was going to plan, but it wasn't like that towards the end of the game. No, we can go back to probably two weeks ago against Cambridge City. It was very similar. We, we worked extremely hard to get in front, very professional, played some good stuff, got two good goals, should have had the game buried, put to bed, and then we decided that that was enough. We don't have to do any more. We can go home. And from nowhere, they get a free kick, they put the ball in the box, it ricochets away, the, the, they, they put the ball in the back of the net, and it's always going to be a problem after that because at 2-1, they had nothing to lose. We had enough opportunities to finish the game off between... I think we hit the post and the bar and the keeper made two great saves and we missed a couple of one-on-ones um, but you know for any set piece that comes into the box you're always going to be under a little bit of pressure and we felt the pressure a bit in the last 15-20 minutes. We didn't keep the ball as well as we've done early on um, and I felt we'd got a little bit unprofessional in the last 20 minutes and it's a shame because our first half performance I felt was, was good um, but as I said to you earlier and I'll keep saying it and I'll keep saying we have a, a, an inconsistency about us at the moment. And the inconsistencies popped up again today, especially in the second half when we took our foot off the pedal. At the start of the season, we were coming from behind to win games. Now the problem seems when we get 2 0 up, when we let one in and we get very jittery. Yeah, but I'd say after that, David, we still, you know, we still had enough chances to, to have gone 3 1 4 1 5 1 between that period. Um, but the longer the game went on at 2 1, um, they got a bit more confidence. They've thrown an, the centre half up front, and they started to lump it. And you know, when you've got a team as big as what they was, it's always going to cause you problems. And, and the more free kicks and throw-ons we give away, they can put it in the box. And you only need a bit of luck in terms of a ball ricocheting around, and they might have got a second goal. And then, then you've got a replay on your hands. So we've had enough chances, as I said earlier. You know, the, the, the way we've not finished the game off is down to us at the end of the day. You know, yes, we've hit the bar. Yes, we've hit the post. Yes. The keepers made two great saves and we've missed some very good chances. But, you know, for me with the game, you know, we go and get a third and a fourth, the game's dead and buried and we haven't got to be hanging on. But there's still little things about us not, not seeing a game out was, was, was evident again today. And uh, as I say, I just think the inconsistency and the lack of professionalism was shown again, especially in the last 20 minutes. Is it uh, the end of a game? Is the criticism all aimed at us for the way we played? Or do we give credit for Bridport? Three divisions below us and uh, two down, they didn't throw a towel in. No, you have to give them massive credit at the end of the day, but as I said earlier, 2-1, they had something to play for, 3-1, 4-1, 5-1, they've got nothing to play for, uh, and we'd have seen the game out comfortably, but you know we're the ones that have allowed them to get back in the game, because we've not taken our chances in one area, and we've not defended a set piece in the other area, but there were some things that went on in, in certain areas of the middle of the park, we didn't move the ball sharp enough, people wanted to run with it, people started getting caught in possession of the ball, and they're all the things we spoke to them about at length, we have to move the ball quicker, we have to move it sharper, and when we do that we're a very good side. But we have these little spells where everyone thinks they can have four, five, six, seven touches, and you get closed down. At any level you play that, if you want more touch, more than two or three touches, you get closed down. Every now and then it will come off, as you see, with Zane with one of his runs. You know, he's at four or five and he's at the post of a great shot. But, you know, we complicate things in the second half and uh, become a hard game, and in the end, as you say, only need a little bit of luck, and they could have got a draw and gone the other uh, uh, back to them on Wednesday. But, you know, we should have been out of sight a long, long way before they were given the opportunity in the last 20 minutes. Funny enough, possibly an incident that turned the game was an early injury to Kieran Monlui and brought on Sean Lucio. And he's got a few good goals this season, and he added, a, added another one today to set us on the way. Yeah, and as I said, you know, I just said to you there off the record, it, funny enough, I felt it changed the game a little bit because as soon as um, we put Zane into the hole and, and Sean on, all of a sudden we started to move the ball really quick, we started to pass it, played some good little one twos, little angles, and we managed to get the two goals and could have had a third and a fourth. I think Zane hit the post. Um, and their keepers made a great save, and I think Sam Merson missed a chance on the back post. But again, you know, by, by fortunate be really that, that the injury happened, but it did change the game in terms of us moving the ball a lot quicker. We got the two goals, should have got a third and a fourth, really. We didn't get that. And even in the second half, before they even got their goal, I think Sam Merson's had a, had a clear one on one opportunity. He should have really taken a two touches, he snatched it and put it wide. I think Zane Banton's had an opportunity and he's knocked it wide. I think Zane had two opportunities and knocked them both wide. And then, uh, as I say, a free kick comes in the box, they win a header and we don't react to the second ball and it's 2-1 and then it's game on. You know, that's given the lift that they wanted and at that stage I felt if we'd have gone and got a third and a fourth, you know, it could have been five or six quite easily in the end. But full credit to them because they stayed in the game, they rode their luck at times. We didn't finish off correctly, we didn't punish them in terms of taking the third goal and it allowed them to stay in the game right up into the 93rd minute. Percy Kianjabeni came in for David Noble, I believe he's unwell, 
and it's nice to see him open his account for the season. Yeah, it was good. Um, you know, we've got to be careful with Percy, as we say, because he hasn't played much football, and I just felt he got a little bit tired in spells. He started off really sharp, scored his goal, and then he had a sort of 15 minutes just before half time where I felt he was trying to get his second win, and then in the last 20 minutes of the, of the match, he sort of struggled a little bit. The ball was bypassing him in midfield, and he got caught in possession two or three times. So they're all the things. As we said, he's a 20-year-old. We've still got to work with him. He's got to shift the ball a little bit quicker than what he's doing, but he's taking things on board, and it was great for him to score the goal, and uh, it was good for him to go and celebrate with the crowd as well. In the FA Cup, you can name seven substitutes. We only had five. That probably says a lot about the size of the shape of the squad at the yeah, moment. Yeah, I mean, we've got, we've got a few young lads there, and I could have named, named Lee on the bench, but you know, at the end of the day, we can only use three anyway, so I don't understand why you have five and seven substitutes in these, these games anyway. It just seems to keep the squad happy. Um, obviously, the prim Premiership clubs have got big squads, and we haven't got a big squad, and we understand that. And, but as you say, you have, you have budgets, you have budgets to work to, and our, our budget works to a squad of 17, 18. So I could have named two more of the young ones, but it's just uh, crazy if you're not going to use them. The important thing is, uh, when you look in the record books, we beat Bridport, we're through to the final qualifying round. That's another 12,000, I think, in the bank, and you'll be looking for a home tie in the final qualifying round, no doubt. Um, I just think we need a tie where I feel we're going we're gonna to turn up, which is, which is, you know, a home tie would be great, yes. Um, but it'd be nice to get to the first round again, as we did last season. And I think it was great for the town. I think it was great for the supporters. And it'd be great for the change room because, I, I, you know, I really believe it. I think we've got a change room in there that, that, that's as good as anything I've worked with. But we have to have this mentality to, to see games out. And at the moment, I'm, I, at half-time, I couldn't trust them whether they could see the game out today. And that's a worry because I don't think we've got enough in there to go and see the game out, be professional and, and, and do it correctly. So, yeah, home tie would be great from the crowd point of view. Um, but again, we've just got to wait and see till Monday and see what it brings us and we can plan and prepare after that. It's interesting, since the start of the 13-14 season, I think it is, we've had 12 ties against lower league opposition, 11 wins and one draw, three against higher placed opposition, and we've conceded 18 goals in losing those three games. <laughs> it's not a great record to look forward to in the fourth qualifying round, but we could get drawn away to a conference side away from home. Well, let's hopefully we don't get a, a team from a higher division, first and foremost, because I don't really want to increase that record anymore but I think we've got to just wait and see what we get I mean I think we'd all like a home tie I think we'd like a home tie against somebody in a lesser league than us as we've seen over the past but you know at the moment you know my concern is that you know we've got to see games out better than what we are and I feel today was very much like that Eastbourne game if you don't see the game out they go and get a goal in the last couple of minutes and it's about being professional it's about, about doing the things right but we need to have leaders on the park we need to have leaders who are going to talk to players and, and get them to move the ball and, and get the ball in the corner flags and in two minutes to go we shouldn't be putting crosses in the box that led to them getting another opportunity up there and as I say if they'd have nicked a goal from it it would have been it'd have been criminal because we have to learn to keep the ball and kill the game and finish the game off if it opens up as it did for Kingsley in the very last minute there you know, he's got to go and put, bury that in him. I mean, and I, they all said it's bubbled, but for me, he has to get over the top of it and stick it in the bottom corner. But we've had enough chances, as I said. But, you know, in the end, we're hanging on, which is which is not correct. Kieran Monlui, is the injury bad, do we know? Oh, I mean, he, he felt a ping, so I'd imagine he, he, he's pulled it quite badly. I mean, just past experience, I think he'd probably be four or six weeks in terms of that, so we'll have to see where we are with that. But as I say, it's probably the first hamstring I've had since I've been in here nearly two years now, and that's the first hamstring we've had, so it's. Uh, it's a question we have to just see. He's had a lot of games just lately. And as I said, the players have had a lot of games just lately. I think if you go back to the uh, the Eastbourne game, I think we played Eastbourne, then we went Haven, then two Cambridge games, and then obviously last Saturday at Whitehawk, and then again on Tuesday night, and, and again today. So I think we've had seven games in three weeks. So if you're playing week in, week out, as people like Solomon is, like Kieran's been playing, I know we rested him for one of the games. But if you look at it, it's been a hard shift for these boys, and since the start of the season, you know, 12 league games, three cup ties, 15 games, and I think we're only probably eight weeks into the season. So, you know, it, 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 with a small squad, it tests you, um, and it certainly tested some of the players. Cause I did think they got a little bit tired second half, and, and as you say, we've suffered with Kieran doing a doing a hamstring. But it's peculiar because it was sort of 25 minutes into the game. It weren't, weren't as if it happened at the start um, or late on when he was getting tired. So we're going to have to just say maybe just twist it a little bit and uh, obviously ping. So. Four to six weeks, but as I say, it's been a tough, tough start to the season. Fifteen games within the first sort of two months, eight weeks of the season. So it's virtually one game every two weeks, and uh, and it's been a, it's been a test for these boys. Of course, Solomon also had his hand wrapped up today. 
Um, but now we have got this clear week, so apart from Kieran, do you expect to have a full squad for next Saturday's league match at home to Bath City? Hopefully, we've got to see how David is. Obviously, I think he's got um, a bit of what um, Harold Solomon had in terms of a chest infection. I mean, even Tom Bender's feeling a little bit as if he's got a chest infection. He was actually being sick late on in just after the game there, and, and I know Sean Lucian was feeling rough on Thursday night with a bit of a chest infection. So it's something that might be going around, so we've got to be careful that we don't spread it any further. And I certainly know when Zane in the car on Thursday dropped him back off at home and he was cough, cough, cough. So something that might have gone around, we've just got to be careful and uh, you know, we'll see how we go over the course of the week and uh, assess them all by the time we get to next Saturday against Bath. Yeah, so back to our league. Third in the table, sitting pretty. <laughs> the last six games, it's six points. So it'd be a nice return to winning ways, isn't it? It would be, one? yeah. I mean, it's great. As I say, at the end of the day, we, you know, it's, it's OK looking at six games, six points. But, you know, the first six games, we've got 18 points. So I think I have to look at it over, over the course of the 12 games that... You know, we we're exactly where we wanted to be, two points a game. So we are where we are. You know, we're not gonna you're not gonna win every single game and you're not gonna hopefully draw too many games because draws at this league do do tend to cause you problems in the long term. So we have to look at it from that side of it. But as I say, it'd be nice to get back to winning ways and then obviously a week FA Cup the week after. So it is a bit hit and miss at the moment, but you know, we've got to see where we are by the time we obviously get into next Saturday. Lovely, thanks very much Ian and uh, we await the draw which I believe is on Monday. Thank you, David. And that will be for the FA Cup fourth qualifying round. This next round will be in two weeks' time. But next Saturday, the 7th of October, we are at home to Bath City National League South, kick-off 3pm.